welcome to the Jugoscopy Studios here in Geneva. I am joined today by Babrak Abra from Natixis Global Asset Management. So welcome. Thank you very much, Jessica. My pleasure. So Natixis Global Asset Management has just released the most recent global survey of individual investor attitude. So let's dive straight in with some of the headline stats. So they seem to reveal that investors are optimistic, but that's not quite in line with their risk tolerance. So why is this? Yeah, that's really that. If we, if we have to bring out the result of the survey in two, two big figures or two big uh, uh, results is optimism on one side and uh, the risk and the perception of this risk on the other side. So it's true that when we get the, um, the result and we've run this survey to with 7,000 uh, individual investors around the globe uh, from 17 countries, uh, we are pretty surprised to see that this year there are more optimistic compared than last year because they expect a return of 9.7% uh, above inflation, which is very high if you consider inflation of a couple of percent. It ends with real return of 11, 12, up to 15 percent. And uh, well, you, you would think that in Switzerland they would be a little bit more cautious. Actually, in Switzerland they expect also 8 uh, percent above inflation. What is interesting to see is the trend is from last year to this year, we went from 9 to 9.7 on the global scale and from 7 to 8 in Switzerland. So people are more uh, optimistic today. Is that, is that something negative uh, necessary? Because it goes, um, the return goes with the risk you take. So if, uh, if you have a good vision of the risk you want to take, uh, it's fine. So if you see the other side of the, of, the, of the equation and if you see the risk side, we will see um, on the next slide uh, that the, the investors in Switzerland they are conflicted between on one side protecting their capital and on the other side having this return. And 61% in Switzerland said they have this conflict. When, if you look um, on the performance side, if we ask them if you have to choose on between performance and uh, the safety of their investment, they will choose safety. And in a large majority of 79%. And this is where we have this conflict. On one side, they want to have 8% of performance above inflation, but the other side, they would privilege the safety. And this is not something new. Uh, it exists for years. There's an old quote from, from Wall Street that says uh, that there are two emotions that drive uh, investment. It's one side greed and the other side fear. Uh, not very, not 100% okay with the adjective used here. I think we can use, on some academies use hope and fear, but, uh, but yeah, this is really the, 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 uh, the results that we see. Uh, we have these, um, these conflicts. So investors are conflicted, and what do you think you can do with this information? Uh, the question is, is, uh, is to see what they do first. So, so we ask them, <coughs> what do you do? Do you have a goal when you invest uh, your, your assets? And here the results are very, very surprising. And year over year, we, 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 we see that uh, it's, uh, it's more and more surprising because 57% on the global scale, but even more, 67 in Switzerland, they don't have a goal. So you can say, okay, maybe they don't have this target, but maybe they have a plan on a vague goal to, to, to attain. And it's the same, 67% will tell you that uh, uh, they don't have a plan. And even more, 79 in Switzerland don't have a clear plan. So we ask them, how do you invest? What's, what's your driver? Which direction you, uh, direction you take when you invest? And the result, as you can see on the number, is uh, it's, uh, they invest on the guts. So they, they, they're going to go and, uh, and like that, check their investment on the guts. And, uh, and that's where we see there is room uh, for an asset manager li uh, like, uh, like us, because we believe we can help advisors to help their end client to help their uh, investors. You have to know that we started those studies and we started to, to think about how to create a better portfolio really in the, after the crisis, 2008 uh, crisis. And at this time, we thought, what can we do for this industry? And we realized that there are few simple rules, uh, discipline uh, to have that could really help investors to have uh, better constructed and better portfolios. And investors look 
for that. So, so we asked them, do you need advice? Do you need an advisor? And 62% came and, and said, yes, we, we, we want to have in Switzerland, we want to have advice uh, on the portfolios uh, that, that we own, that we have. And this is where we think we have a card to play. Basically, it's like um, uh, if you compare that to diet, is uh, in a way is you can every year uh, before the summer when the weather is nice, like like uh, like now, you can think about uh, lose weight for the summer and do your diet, and or you can have a disciplined uh, way of eating. You can make sure that you don't eat way too much than what you burn, and it's the same for investment. Don't take much more risk than when you can really uh, bear as investors. And that's going to avoid you to redeem, to go out of the market at the worst time. And that's going to avoid you the largest mistake. So we just come with those ideas. We just come with those basic rules, with some discipline. We bring also technology with, with, um, in the, co in the uh, construction of the portfolios. And we think we can help uh, the industry to, to, uh, to better manage those, those, uh, those portfolios. Great, so how would you describe in a Texas global assets management <coughs> strategy? So our, our strategy is directly linked to, um, to our, our model or, or our DNA or, or I think the right word will be our culture. Our group is really based on, on, on four pillars. The first pillar is as an asset management is no big news, it's performance. We uh, target to deliver good performance for our investors, for our intermediaries. And uh, our difference, uh, our differentiator is that we believe that the best way to deliver this performance uh, is really to have expert of a field. We don't think that having a chief investment officer on the top uh, of, uh, of an organization deciding if you have to allocate on Indian equities on one side or on inflation linked bond on the other side, we don't think this is efficient. We think you need expert in a field, in a niche, in an asset class, in a region. And this is our model. So we have those affiliates that have all their color and their expertise in one of these fields. And uh, so that's, that's the first thing uh, important for us. The second pillar of our group is really um, to retain the talented portfolio manager. Because asset management is not like all about performances. It's performances on the long term. Because we're talking about money, so we're talking about trust. Uh, you have to build this mind with your, 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 your partners and your clients. Uh, so how can we retain those talents? And for us, the best way is with our model, having a revenue profit sharing with those affiliates, with those brands, and making sure that uh, we share and we align our interests together. And uh, the average of the industry is eight years. So every eight years, a portfolio manager, a talent of our industry is going to go from one company to another one. And the average of our company is 12 years. So we were able to maximize the number. It's very important for us to maximize the number. So those were the two pillars. And to come back to your question, so the strategy we have on this side is to, um, um, if we see that we have a lack of an expertise somewhere, as an investor, we will we'll manage his portfolio with a lot of diversification and with minimum overlap, we try to do the same with those affiliates. So we're going to buy, uh, maybe buy is not the right word, although we buy the equity of those companies, we really partner with them, but we're going to try to buy those affiliates and that's going to complete our offer. Now, uh, the two other pillars of our organization is first, uh, helping investors to build more durable, more uh, robust portfolios. And we invest a lot here uh, with teams, experts, consultants we have in Boston and in London, team of people who are going to run analysis of those portfolios for our clients or for our prospects. So this is a big field of investment for us, for our strategy overall. And the last pillar of our organization is really to have this local uh, footprint. <coughs> Although we are a global company, Again, we talk about money and investments, and we have this bind between the clients and us. When you talk about this subject, you need the trust, you need to have uh, someone close to you. And this is why uh, we deploy and we uh, have more and more local offices of distribution. So this, in the next 12 months, we're going to open an office in Zurich, 
uh, we just opened three offices between Central and South America. We expand our distribution also in, uh, in Asia to be close to our partners, to be close to the intermediaries. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks to our 10 year of uh, net positive flows uh, for this past year, we just had like record uh, flows also those past uh, quarters. It helped us to expand and to grow and those are the fields where we have a lot of investments currently. That's great. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much, Jessica. A pleasure to talk to you and to your audience. Well, that's all that we have time for today in the Ducoscopy studios. But for further updates and interviews, do check out the Ducoscopy website. Goodbye for now.